So you're 55 years old, you've saved $500,000, and the question is, when can you retire? In today's video, we're gonna look at a target retirement date of 62 years old, spending $6,000 a month, and then we're gonna look at some different variables to see how different decisions could impact your probability of success with those assumptions. Hi, I'm Troy Sharp, CEO of Oak Harvest Financial Group, certified financial planner professional, certified tax specialist, and also host of the Retirement Income Show. Okay, as I've been doing with these videos recently, I like to start with this chart because it's a very clear visual depiction of what inflation does to our goal of wanting to spend $6,000 a month. So to maintain that same purchasing power throughout retirement, it's not just $6,000 a month that we need to plan on pulling out every month. Because of inflation, we need to anticipate pulling more and more money out. $6,000 a month is seventy-two dollars in this particular scenario. They have $500,000 saved, but it's all in retirement accounts. So we actually need to pull out more than $72,000 to account for taxes. But as we go through time, and we see it gets up in about 20 years here to over $120,000. Okay, so that's $10,000 a month they need to pull out just to spend in today's dollars, $6,000 a month. Hope you grasp that concept. It's very important because we get a lot of comments it's that, 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 that don't necessarily reflect the understanding of the erosion of purchasing power due to inflation. And of course, inflation is a hot topic right now with supply chain disruptions and people being paid to stay home, as well as workers not taking jobs. So we have a ton of inflation concerns. So it's important to grasp this concept. Okay, here are the parameters for the video. Husband and wife, 55 years old, both of them. He has 350,000 in the 401k, she has 150,000. He's contributing the maximum amount allowed by law into the 401k, so $26,000. She's putting $6,000, or about 10% of her salary. I have this right here, 80,000 and 60,000, so their total income is 140 grand. They're saving 32,000 a year inside the 401k. Both have life expectancies of age 90. The first thing we're gonna look at is, is what happens if they take Social Security at 62? This is a very common conversation we'll have if someone wants to retire around 62. Troy, should I go ahead and take Social Security? I'd rather preserve my assets, take Social Security, then spend them down and let Social Security defer. We're also going to look at a what if analysis. And what that does is that's gonna show us if the probability changes, if they were to defer till 67, their social security benefits and draw down their assets in, that, in the meantime there. Also, I wanna look at today a what if scenario for different investment allocations and then tie that into what we call a bad timing risk or a sequence of returns risk. So what happens if they have a more aggressive portfolio versus a more conservative portfolio, and we have bad timing, where the markets go down in the first couple of years of retirement. One of the comments I received recently said, Troy, why do you think the markets won't perform as well over the next 10 years as they have over the past 10 years? So I don't have a crystal ball, I don't know for certain, but I do know that the Federal Reserve has printed literally about $8 trillion over the past 10 years and put that into the financial system. On top of that, Congress has also spent trillions and trillions of dollars to support the economy, and to, which ultimately helps to support the markets. So my base assumption is that the next 10 years, the markets won't average the same 14 to 15% that they have over the past 10 years. So if the Fed starts to, to raise rates, and tighten the balance sheet next year in 2022 and into 2023 as they've talked about doing, there is a decent chance we could have a pullback in the markets. We could have a period of stagnation for maybe 12 to 18 months where the market does a lot of this, but the two points are fairly equal. So there's some uncertainty moving forward. So I want you to understand if you're in this situation or any similar age and asset net worth breakdown, uh, situation. I just want you to understand how different portfolios can impact the overall probability of success in regards to risk level. This is why in our retirement process, investment management and risk management is step one. 
From there, we build an income plan, a tax plan, a healthcare plan, and an estate plan. Very important though to start with managing risk once you cross over that line into the retirement phase. So we're gonna look at these as well as some cash flow charts and a few different things. Before we jump into the analysis, I just wanna show you how much the accounts will grow to if you start with $500,000, you're putting 32,000 a year in, and we're trying to get to a million dollars because remember, we're trying to retire at 62, so we have seven years here. To get to a million, which is the future value here, starting with 500,000, putting 32 in, we simply need to average about 5.5% per year over the next seven years. Let's say we wanted to hit that million dollar number in five years. We would need to average closer to about 10% per year. So again, our timing, how much income we need, the tax plan, all of that is dependent upon step one in our retirement process, which is investment management and risk management. If we're trying to retire at 60 and we figure that a million is a good number to get that done, we're gonna need a more aggressive portfolio. But then we need to talk to you about the downsides if we have bad timing, if the markets pull back. And that's a conversation that we have and we weigh the pros and cons and ultimately you make the decision of, of what's best for you and your family. But these are important parts of developing a full retirement plan to get you to retirement. Because the big questions that are retirement process answers is do you have enough? Can you retire? How long will your money last? How do you pay less tax? And most importantly, if something happens to you, will your family be okay? These are the beginning steps of starting to get those questions answered. And through ongoing discussions and having a relationship, we continue to provide answers and, and recommendations and solutions to help you feel more comfortable about those choices. Okay, we're gonna jump right into the Monte Carlo simulation. This is gonna look at a thousand different retirements, hypothetical retirements, where we have different returns in all of those years. We run a thousand different simulations here, and based on all the parameters that we've looked at so far, just to give you a refresher here, you can pause the screen and look at these. But again, spending 6,000 a month is the goal. It comes in at about an 84% success, okay? So that's not bad. This is retiring at 62.55 now. This isn't something where I would say, no, you can't do it. You have to keep working past 62, but I would say it does require monitoring and tracking as the years progress. How are the accounts doing? How much are you saving? Any unexpected expenses? Any change in your goals? When your accounts are linked up to a plan and you're working with someone over time to help you have these types of discussions and make uh, not just good analysis, but that analysis leads to helping you to make better decisions, you start to feel more confident as time goes on about when you can retire, how much income you can spend, what your tax situation is going to be like, and, and the big one, again, if anything happens to you, that you feel comfortable that your family will be taken care of. The first variable that I wanna look at is taking Social Security at a different time. One of the most common things that I'll hear is, Troy, if I retire at 62, I don't wanna touch my assets. I'd rather them grow, 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 and take Social Security early because one, it may not be there, it may be reduced, I don't want to touch my assets, whatever that reasoning may be, we hear that often. I will tell you this though, deferring Social Security will cause you to pull more of your assets earlier, but I've sat with thousands of families over the course of my career, and when I have these conversations with people in their 70s and 80s, no one ever says, Troy, I'm really tired of all this extra income being deposited into my bank account monthly. One of the most secure things you can have in retirement is a secure source of income being deposited every single month, whether that's a pension, whether that's from deferring your social security, or if you add an annuity into the mix, or maybe it's rental real estate, whatever that is, having a secure source of income, despite what your account balances are, I've just noticed throughout my career that it, it adds a tremendous amount of peace and comfort to people's overall lifestyle, their well-being, and just retirement in general. So first variable here, all I've done, so we have the current scenario that we looked at that came in at 84, I've replicated it with no changes, and then I've replicated it again, but I've changed the social security age. So this has changed the social security age from 62 to 67. So here we go, the current 
age to file 62 in both of these scenarios. Here I've changed it to 67. So the difference in income, 37,776 versus 26,443. So what this means, and I'll show you in a chart, that's five years where Social Security is deferring and to get the income needed, we're taking out of our retirement accounts. So that can be scary because those accounts will go down. Now keep in mind, they're 55 today, but they don't wanna retire until 62 and they're saving all that money in the 401k. So they're not retiring with $500,000, they're gonna retire with closer to a million if they continue to make those contributions to their retirement accounts. That may make you feel a little bit more comfortable deferring Social Security, but this is a personal decision. This is a personal analysis. This is not a cookie cutter type recommendation and there's not much that really irks me more than when I go online, I read articles or I hear you know, other people on TV or various places giving you cookie cutter advice about your Social Security. It's simply not a cookie cutter decision. For some of you, it absolutely will make sense to take it at 62. For others, it, the right thing to do will be to defer all the way to 70. And for a lot of you, one spouse should take it at this age and the other spouse should take it at this age. Your risk tolerance comes into play. Of course, your longevity, your tax situation, how much you have in retirement accounts impacts your required minimum distributions, which impacts your income later in life and therefore your taxes as well. All of these things, it's like dominoes. You tip one over making a decision, it impacts everything else. These things need to be taken into consideration when you're making a social security decision, especially at 62 versus 67. Okay, so you can see deferring to 67, living till 90 increases the probability of success from 84 to 94. But I wanna look at some charts here. Okay, now we're gonna look at a cash flow chart and some very interesting points here to, to, to keep in mind. Okay, so first off, we said this family wanted to spend $6,000 a month. That's $72,000 a year, six times 12. But you see here in 2028, the total goal is $84,000. Well, Troy, if they wanna spend 72, why are they pulling out 84? It's because it's in today's dollars. This is inflation. So they don't need to pull out 6,000 a month. They need to pull out 84, which is the equivalent of pulling out 72,000 today. It's a time value of money. Taxes, we have to take into consideration taxes because all of this family's money is inside the retirement account. This is also something common that we see. Please, if you're in this situation, do whatever you can to also save money outside of your retirement accounts. We want tax diversification in our buckets, not just 401k, we'd love to see some Roth, we'd love to see some non-IRA savings. This gives us flexible income choices because once you get to retirement and we're building that income plan and that tax plan, when we have choices of where we can take income from, that means we can control what goes on your 1040, the tax return. And when we plan it out over time, Time, we can have a strategy that keeps taxes down is the goal while also increasing the income that you receive over time. So, okay, 91,000 is totally what we need to pull out. This is looking at an average rate of return scenario. I wanna look at a bad timing next. Okay, so first thing we're gonna look at is deferring Social Security until seven, or 67 here. So the retire at 62, which is 2028, 20, take Social Security deferred to 67, then we're gonna come back and look at that 62. But we need to pull more money out because of inflation, so we're pulling about 91,000 out when you look at taxes as well. And the portfolio in this instance has grown to about a million 36,000 at retirement. Here's what I wanna point out. When we defer Social Security to here, we have to live off the portfolio in the meantime. So it drops from about a million 36 to about 800,000. But then again, we have a significant amount of more money. Look at this, 49 and 36, $85,000 a year of guaranteed lifetime income from Social Security simply by deferring it to 67. Okay, coming back now to, to taking Social Security at 62. So Jane's is 22,855, his is 30,000, that's $53,000. That is a tremendous amount of less guaranteed lifetime income. So the question for you may be, do you feel more secure having income being deposited into your accounts every single month um, at a much higher rate, but having a little bit less savings? Or do you feel more comfortable with more savings and uh, a lower income? It's just one of the conversations to have. If we look here at the portfolio balance, because we're taking Social Security, we're not having to take from retirement accounts. So that can grow because in this example, it's assuming we're taking the, uh, essentially the investment earnings. 
So we're still able to grow a little bit. We still need to make some withdrawals because Social Security doesn't cover everything. But when we look at an average rate of return scenario, we uh, are earning enough interest to cover that, that deficit, that income deficit. So, okay, so I just wanted to point that out, but now I wanna to switch to a bad timing example because this is a rosy scenario. I don't really like average rates of return, but I, I wanna just get home the point of the difference between higher account balances and higher social versus uh, lower social security income and vice versa. Okay, so now coming back here, we're gonna look at a bad timing. Same chart, but now this is deferring social security. 36, 49 at age 67, still have the same needs. But if we look at the investment earnings here in the first year, the accounts are worth a million 36, but the market goes down. This is not a huge decline. It's about a 20% decline. If you've been investing long enough, you've lived through plenty of 20% decline. So you know this is completely reasonable. But the sequence of returns, we have to, we, we suffer the loss and we have this cash surplus, or excuse me, this deficit because we need more income because we've deferred social security. Ending value of 751. Next year, we have another loss, but only 48,609. This is a pretty scary number right here. You're two years into retirement, your million dollars has turned into 609. Then we start to have some positive years. We see the account starting to build back up so this is a great example of what our intentions are when it comes to retirement planning may not actually be what we do. So in this scenario, if we were intending on deferring Social Security out here until 67, but we go through a market decline in the beginning years for whatever reason, we may make, we may change course. We may go ahead and take Social Security and let the accounts rebound. You can always, if we get a rebound that's quick, we can always pay back Social Security within that first year continue to defer it and um, go from there. But just wanted to show you on the bad timing here, if we defer Social Security, what it can do in, in conjunction with sequence of returns risk to the overall account balances over time. Okay, now I wanna look at the same uh, bad timing scenario, but looking at taking Social Security early. Okay, so we've taken Social Security early. We have a big loss in these first two years. In this simulation, the loss is actually a little bit bigger. But look at our ending values here. So many of you are gonna feel more comfortable with these ending values at this level as opposed to the other one. So this is how, again, when we're planning to go one particular direction, market circumstances, developments in life, whatever may happen, can cause us to change our retirement strategy. Okay, there is a solution to this possibly. If we know we're going to defer Social Security longer, we should probably consider reducing risk to mitigate any sequence of return probability or impact, negative impact. So we still have the same two what ifs here. Um, nothing's changed in this scenario. Here, what I've done, same thing, we're taking Social Security at full retirement age, but I wanna change the portfolio. I wanna go much more conservative here. So before retirement, we're gonna go a little bit more conservative than this example. The average rate of return drops from an expected 5.78 to 5.03, and then we're gonna go fairly conservative here in retirement to 4.69. So. We see the standard deviation versus the old portfolio versus this one, 12.6 versus 7.5. There's a 95% probability that your portfolio returns will be within two standard deviations of your um, constructed portfolio. So 95% probability, statistically speaking, we're not going to lose more than about 15% with this portfolio, but this one puts us up to the 25% range when we're looking at statistical analysis of your portfolio. So, we do the calculation, we've went more conservative on the portfolio because we are intending to delay Social Security a bit longer. Comes up to 97%. So not only is the probability increased, but if we look at the bad timing, here's the bad timing. If you can see this, this portfolio, the bad timing is 20%. This is negative 13%. So this is going to much more I would say profoundly um, change the overall risk return profile as well as the amount of comfort you have and give you more guaranteed lifetime income. Now, is this strategy right for you? It may or may not be. I don't know. We don't know anything about you right now. But this is just 
a good example of the types of conversations and the types of analysis and the, and the, the, the kind of the nooks and crannies we need to look behind to help develop a customized retirement plan. Again, it, retirement starts with risk management and investments for a reason, because that is the foundation of our plan. From there, we can start to generate income or develop an income strategy. We can have a tax plan and then look at healthcare and of course, estate planning. But if we look at the bad trials chart again, because we've reduced risk in the portfolio, we're still deferring Social Security, so we have a solid amount of guaranteed lifetime income. And then the investment earnings drops from, I believe it was around 200,000 last time to 120,000. 120,000 still stinks, okay, but if the market is down, let's say 20 to 30% in this scenario, maybe 35 or 40, and we only go down 120, which is, let's call it about 12%, we can live with that, okay? That is a manageable downturn in the beginning years of retirement. So the risk management plan in conjunction with the income plan, Social Security, those two work together. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Then you add a tax plan on top of that, okay, now we're cooking, now we have a plan in place. As you can see, this is not a 15 minute plan though. I see a lot of people out there advertising, you can have a 10 minute retirement plan or 15 minute retirement plan. Well, I guess you can, but the outcome is going to be such that you're gonna probably realize uh, you only put 10 or 15 minutes into the plan, so you can't be mad at that point of what you get. So, looks pretty good here, the account balances, okay, beginning value, ending value here. They still go down, this is still actually not um, um, a comfortable feeling, I'm sure for many of you. Um, but again, big losses in the beginning, but once we get to here, most of the income needs are being taken care of from Social Security, so those accounts can sit there and grow. So some mix in between all of these strategies may be the right one for you. We don't know, but this is why the conversation needs to be had. If you like this video, please hit that thumb up. Of Yay! course, hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified when we upload new content, hit that bell icon, and we'd love to hear your comments down below. And always don't forget to share this video with a friend or family member so we can start to get more people more connected to their money and help people make better decisions in retirement.